so that we can have the plan of life. I want to read a note to you from, before I do, um, so that there's no confusion, I want you to know that our giving tree this month is actually a Christmas tree. The decorations that are hanging on it are just decorations. We're not doing a special collection or anything like that. I figured we'd do something a little bit different this month, but they're not right and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but just wanted to change it up a little bit. Anyway, so speaking of the giving tree and, and all the work and all the giving that y'all do, let me share with you a note uh, that we received this week. It says, Dear Stockton Memorial Baptist Church, thank you. Thank you so much for sponsoring eight children of the South Richmond community. We and they are blessed because of you. And that comes from uh, Reverend Wesley Garrett. Wesley is the um, coordinator. The director. Uh, director. Coordinator. <laughs> director. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Director of the South Richmond community. And uh, we were saying was blessed earlier. Uh, this week, with the opportunity to go and deliver all the gifts that you guys uh, are so gracious and donating to the families that we were helping, Wesley was, was purely excited, and, and they had a room full of gifts. It was such a joy to see uh, all that the churches have done to help these families. So thank you for that. Uh, I want to remind you that our Point Sad collection will continue through Sunday, December 18th. If you'd like to place a poinsettia on the tree in honor of or in memory of a loved one, I invite you to do so. The forms are located on the counter outside of the church office. I uh, also want to remind you that we may continue to receive your gifts for the Body and the Moon Christmas offering through Christmas Day. These envelopes are special envelopes like this, along, uh, some on the mission table and some uh, at the table by the door to use. Uh, to use for those gifts. Our WMU will hold their December meeting immediately following worship today in this. Uh, uh, no. no, I'm sorry, next Sunday. Next, I'm sorry. next Sunday uh, in the Sunday school room here at the front. I just want to get everybody to think about it. All right. Um, so next Sunday, we do have a special, special uh, opportunity next Sunday. Paul is there for you. Um, Spencer, thank you. I didn't get this. Paul's nephew Spencer has accepted a job with the International Mission Board, and he's worked in cybersecurity there, if I'm not mistaken. And he's going to come and just talk to us for a few minutes here in announcements, just to share a little bit about what his new job entails and some of the things that he's doing in cybersecurity through the International Mission Board. I want to invite you, I want to, invite you to come and, uh, and hear Spencer as he joins us in worship next week. Just to let you know, your offering envelopes for 2023, some will be available starting next week uh, on the table in the narthex. Uh, and whatever I don't have out there next week, they will be out in the next uh, week or two. You'll have them before the end of the month, I promise that. Okay? Uh, let's go ahead and start the final worship. One more prayer. As we gather and worship you this day, Father God, Grant us the peace that you promised to all who put their faith in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom we sing and in whose, whose name we pray. Amen. I've invited uh, Sherry and Randy <coughs> to light our Advent candle this week. <coughs> On this second Sunday of Advent, John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid.
so we may become peacemakers for ourselves and others. In your name, Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen.
Father God, you are so good. Your grace and mercy are from there forever. They are forever, and we are blessed to be called your children. We know that it's your desire that each one of your children walk in the light of Christ, and to that end, you sent your Son to walk this earth so that we can see your glory and accept his life and his love for ourselves. Father God, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us when our words and our actions fall short and your light fails to shine out from us. We ask you, Holy One, to come into our hearts this day and every day as we prepare to celebrate his birth once again. On this special Sabbath day, O oh Lord, we pray for the strength and the courage to be persistent in our individual ministries and in the work of Stockton Memorial Baptist Church. Father, we ask you to keep us mindful that when we serve others, we are serving you. Whether it's a simple kindness like holding a door for someone or sharing one of our blessings with one another. We do this not so that we receive thanks or praises, but so that in all we say and do, you will be glorified. We pray this morning for discerning minds and for caring hearts, Father. We pray for your constant encouragement to respond to your will for our lives. We ask for your healing to be poured out on our church and our church family, especially remembering those who are in our hearts, those who are missing here with us today, and those on our prayers. We pray for the peace of Christ to be in each one of us. And now as we do each week, we pray, come Holy Spirit, come and fill us once again with the fire of your love. May all of our words be loving and encouraging, especially during this busy time of the year. May we never forget whose birth we celebrate and why Christ came to dwell among us. Lord God, we ask you to hear us as we unite our hearts and our voices together, praying as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. If you understand as you're able to sing number 76, O come, O come, be made. <laughs>
Father, as we come to return a portion of the many blessings you give us, let us be good stewards of these blessings, Lord, so they can be used and multiplied to further your kingdom the way you have us further. In Jesus' name we pray.
which is the old Hebrew way of spelling it. Or, no, excuse me, you spell it with an I, which is the old Hebrew way of spelling it, or you spell it with an E, which is the Greek translation. Emmanuel still means the same thing. It means God with us. This morning I want to take a few minutes just to look at what that means and what Emmanuel means in our world today. But before we begin, I want to share a story. And it just so happens that this story is about a pastor. In fact, this particular story relates to your pastor at different times throughout the year. It's actually a legend about a man who was experiencing a challenging time in his spiritual life. It wasn't a lack of faith that was bothering him. A better way of putting it would be it was dry spell. Where he had hit a writer's block. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that, with that, what that is. And of course, Advent and Christmas is the worst time for a pastor to have a writer's block. It was a week before Christmas, and he had no idea how he was going to make the story of Christ birth fresh and new for the wonderful members of his old church. He had just about worn holes in the knees of his pants from all the prayers he had been praying as he sought God's help and wisdom. And now on this bitter cold and snowy winter's night, with the wind howling outside his tiny house, there was a persistent banging sound, a knocking sound that just wouldn't go away. Finally, he couldn't stand to hear it anymore, and he eased his tired body up from his desk. And he went to the window where it seemed like the noise was coming from. As he stared out in the pitch dark set at night, suddenly, bang! A small sparrow crashed into the glass. Bang! Another one. Bang! Another one. The poor birds were freezing and were trying desperately to gain access to the warmth of the pastor's house. I've got to do something to save them, he thought to himself. He threw on his winter coat and his boots, wrapped a scarf around his neck, and pulled on his old woolen cap. Startled as the man came out of the door, the sparrows scattered. They flew off. The man trudged through the snowdrifts out to the barn where his cattle lay in the still warm hay. Grabbing some seed in his gloved hands, the man threw open the barn doors and began to scatter the seed to entice the birds to come into the barn where it was warm. The birds, drawn like moths to the light, kept banging against the window of his house. The pastor walked to the house, attempting to shoo the birds back toward the ground. He even left a trail of seed behind him. But every time he got close to the birds, they would be frightened and they would fly out. Frustrated, the pastor returned to his home, hoping that the birds would find their way into the barn by themselves. If only I could turn myself into a bird, he thought. If I did that, they would follow me, and they would be safe, and they would be warm. And that's what it him. That's when he realized he was experiencing the same dilemma that God had faced so many centuries ago, when the stubborn and frightened children of Israel refused to follow God's teachings. And while it was not possible for the pastor to become a bird, he knew it was not only possible, but God had himself become a man so that the people would follow him. And that's what he did. Emmanuel, God with us. But we have to keep in mind that this was not the first attempt that God had made to reach his, to reach his children. You recall that in the beginning, God had a very, very close and personal relationship with Adam and Eve. In fact, 
in the second chapter of the book of Genesis, we read that God daily spent time in the Garden of Eden with the people he had created. But we know that even that perfect setting was destroyed when the serpent, whose name is Satan, came into the picture. And as a result, sin and disobedience entered the man and the woman and became part of human nature moving forward. As we continue to read through God's holy word, we encounter many other times when God made his presence known to his people. For example, in Genesis chapter 32, Jacob encountered God in a dream. In fact, Jacob even wrestled with an angel of God in that dream. In the book of Exodus, God showed himself to the prophet Moses in the form of a burning bush. And he promised Moses and the children of Israel that he would bring them to freedom by appearing to them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so that they would always see God's presence with them. One of my personal favorite interactions of God with his people appears in 1 Kings chapter 19, when God discovered that one of his prophets, Elijah, was cowering in a cave. He was cowering with fear because of the ruthless Queen Jezebel, who had sent armies after Elijah to kill him. Let me pick up in chapter 19, verse 11. The Lord said to Elijah, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the word earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. But after the fire, there came a gentle whisper. You know, my friends, that is exactly what the people of Israel were expecting God to do. They were expecting a fire or an earthquake or some sort of earth-shaking event to bring about God's, to bring God to earth. But that's not how he chose to reveal himself to his people. God could have taken on any form. He could have been a, a whirlwind across the desert. He could have been a giant angel descending from, the, from heaven into the temple. In Jerusalem. He could have raised up another Moses or another Abraham. But instead, on a cold and dark night some 2,000 years ago, the Almighty wrapped himself in human flesh and was born to an ordinary girl in a sleepy little village in an obscure corner of the world. God had come to earth to lead his people back to their heavenly home. Emmanuel, God with us. As we know, that was just the beginning of the story. Because even when God revealed himself in human form, looking just like you or I, he was despised and rejected by the very people whom he had come to save. Some say that the people of Israel, the children of Israel, denied the Son of God because they didn't expect him to come as a baby. They were expecting a king, they were expecting a mighty warrior leading an army against the Roman oppression. The last thing they expected was a virgin to give birth in this tiny village. Why would God allow himself to be born in a cave instead of the castle which he deserved? Yeah, we can think about that, we can contemplate that until the cows come back to the barn, if you will. And people have done that for years and generations. 
I know every single one of you have heard sermons like this that define and tell you exactly why Jesus came the way he did. But people are still caught off guard today. People are still caught by surprise when they have an encounter in their own lives with the Almighty. I can't count the number of times people have asked me, where is God? I have been praying and praying, and it just doesn't seem like God's paying any attention to me. Does he see what's going on in our world? Does he care? When, I've heard this one, when is he going to do something? Well, the question that we need to be asking ourselves is not, is God paying attention? But are we? Are we paying attention? Are we looking, as the children of Israel did 2,000 years ago, are we looking for him to come into our world again? Let me ask you this. Does God still surprise you? Do things still happen in your life that have absolutely no reason to happen but to you? Good and bad. I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. Sometimes good things happen and we just cannot believe. We can't comprehend it. Some things bad, sometimes bad things happen and we ask what? Why? Does he still catch you all the does he still make you catch your breath? Are you still amazed when God answers a prayer or keeps one of his many promises and you did not expect it? How do you respond when you see God at work? Do you just slough it off? Do you call it a coincidence? Do you pray a prayer of thanksgiving? Do you drop to your knees in humility? I guess the big question for us is simply this. If God came to earth today as one of us, should we still be amazed at what he's done? In just a couple of weeks, once again, we will be celebrating the revelation the one single event that changed our world forever. And not just our world, but our lives. And not just our lives, but our individual lives. If I learned nothing else from this study of John 3, 16, I learned that when God makes a promise to his people, he doesn't just make a blanket promise, he makes it to each one of us. What's it say in John 3, 16? For whoever believes, whoever, each one of us, each one of us. Many, many of us, and I have to admit it, that happens to me too, many of us claim that Christmas sneaks up on us, don't we? It's like, it's Christmas again, hey? Right? I mean, we remember our, our spouse's birthdays, we remember our siblings' birthdays, we remember our kids' birthdays. Lord knows we know what our own birthdays are. How can we forget? How can we lose track of the birthday of the one who came to give us the greatest gift of all? The gift of eternal life. Like the shepherds when God's glory shines around us, are we all afraid? Are we sore and afraid? Is it because God has chosen not to reveal himself to us? Or is it just because our world is too busy or too tired or too, too self-consumed to witness his glory? I want you to help me this Advent season. I want us to help ourselves and I want us to help each other.
to make sure that, to help us get past our, our amazement and our surprise. And instead, instead, let's take this period, let's take these next four weeks and be thankful and rejoice in the glory that is due to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome Emmanuel into your home and into your heart this Christmas season and every day. Amen. I can't think of a better way. I cannot think of a better way to celebrate this time of year than to gather at our Lord's table. You know, we're talking about his birth. And when we gather at his table, we remember not just his birth, not just his death and his resurrection, but we remember that he is still Lord of Lord, Lords and King of Kings in our hearts today. That Christ is still alive in us today. That his light shines out for each of us today. So let's gather around his table. Let's say a prayer. And let's celebrate and remember him together.
God's word tells us that on the night that he would be betrayed, Jesus took the upper room and his disciples, and he took bread, and he gave thanks to his heavenly Father, and then he broke the bread. And he said to his disciples, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. to his heavenly father and he said to his disciples drink from this all of you for this is my blood of the new testament my blood of the new covenant the promise the gift of eternal life do this he said in remembrance of me Thank you.